<laughs> I never get tired of it, and I don't think you do either. Uh, even after all these years, that little spurt of adrenaline every time that lock pops open just gives me a thrill. Every time I rake one open. You know, I've had a lot of calls or a lot of uh, messages lately about what's the secret of lock picking? How do I get better? What's the most uh, economic way and the efficient way to get better? And so, you know what? I wrote it down on the back of this card right here. And, and well, I'll tell you what. Let's do that at the end. I'll show you the secret of lock picking uh, at the end. But first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, lock picking itself. Um, there's a lot of videos out there of guys that uh, do an excellent job, probably a lot better job than I could ever do, uh, about the techniques of lock picking. How do you feel for this? How do you beat that pin, etc.? I've done a couple of them myself, but Skylar Town did some uh, super uh, how to pick locks, even did some cutaways. Locksmith Army went to a lot of trouble. He did a great job as well talking about it. Even Kokomo Lock did it, and I can't even compete with those guys. And that's really. That's not what this short video will be about. This video will be about uh, the most efficient way to improve your skills in a short period of time. What's the logical progression of skills? And I think that's what the questions that came in were. Now, I'm not going to be picking locks. In fact, well, I, f I will pick one lock. I'll pick this one one time, but the rest of these, we're just going to be discussing the skills that you should be talking about. Now, before I begin this, I think I'd like to recommend a publication that I wish I wish was around when I was learning to pick locks. And it's not really a book. It's free. It's written by a guy named Mike Gibson. His, his YouTube ID is Dr. Bint, D-R-B-I-N-T. And he wrote a short pamphlet. It's only about 20 pages called Lock Picking, Detail Overkill. And in there, he gives so much information about some of the skills that you should be looking for, how to develop them. It's just amazing to me how he was able to put so much information into such a small package. So I really recommend, you don't need any other book, trust me. Just get that one. It's absolutely free. I'll put a, um, a link to it in the description. So please, please, even if you stop watching this video now, read that and you will turn into a better lock picker almost immediately. One of the things that Mike talked about was tensioning, and he talked about binding order, and that's the only thing I'm going to try to demonstrate here. Uh, he talked, he used it in the concept of a speed bump. So when we're picking a lock, now this is the normal lock, uh, the number three that you've been raking now for a long, long time. That's the lock I want you to use for this. Simply get yourself your uh, your hook, and it can be a standard hook, nothing special. Uh, when I was learning to pick, this was the most important pick in my arsenal, this rake. I was convinced that given enough time, I could rake open a Medico with this thing. Anything was attainable with the rake. But with a little bit of time, I started to realize that, you know, that's not so true. There's a lot of really complex locks out there. There's a lot of things, design features, that are specifically there to defeat me from using this tool. And on that day, I realized I had to get a little bit, get a little bit better. And I think that's probably where a lot of you are right now. So, Dr. Bent starts off with tensioning, and he, talks, he begins with how to get better. And so take the same lock, get yourself your, the hook out of your kit, which you've probably never used before, put it into your lock, and this is where the tensioning becomes so much more important than it ever was when we were using the rake. Apply a little bit of tension so that when you move your pick down the stack, you're looking for one that is not springy. Apply just enough to tension to cause one of them to bind up. And then that's the one that you're going to press on. So let's see if we can make this happen. And when you get him set, again, move around. That means once he's set, you move to the next one. And the next one. And I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder, so I might have a little trouble here. And sometimes you can hear a click. And other times you're not going to hear a click. It's just going to kind of ease into place. He says. I think you can hear those clicks. And there we go. Now why is this better? Well, on this one it's probably not better. You can probably rake this lock much faster than you can single pin pick it. But that's because it has all standard pins and there's only four of them. So when we're raking, we're playing a game of statistics. 
only four pins. We're raking all these different random ways. Sooner or later, we're going to hit that shear line. Probably sooner. So on these locks, we can probably hit the shear line in, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe a minute at the most. We can al almost always hit that shear line. But things change, fellas. They don't want us to rake locks, and so some companies are going to spend a little bit money, a little bit of money to defeat us. They're going to put some extra design features in there that are going to stop us from using this tool. Some of the things that we do are self-inflicted. Uh, this is a good example. This is an old lock from my collection, and I was stupid. I was trying to pick this oh, a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't get any feel. I thought, my God, why can't I pick this thing? And it's because, if you look closely, it's an old lock. It's been used outside. Some of us have these, and we're trying to learn on them. If you have an old lock like this that's been outside, been a little bit of corrosion in there, the first thing we want to do, whether it's this lock or a brand new lock, we can always smooth things up and help ourselves get a little bit better feel uh, about what's going on. By uh, We can slick up the pins, basically. And the way we do it, we use some graphite. Take some graphite, put a little bit down in there, and that should loosen things up. If it doesn't, we're going to move to stage two. Get yourself something like this. I don't work for DuPont, but this is a pretty, pretty good stuff. It's alcohol-based. It's dry film. You put it in there, the alcohol will melt maybe some of the goop out of there, and then the dry lube will, again, will slick up those pins, help me get a little bit better feel. If that doesn't work, fellas, we're not collectors. We're pickers. We pick them open, and then we discard them. So we really don't care about how long these cheap locks last. Get yourself some of this. Squirt it down in there. If WD-40 doesn't free up your lock, shit can it. Get yourself a new one. They're too cheap. Okay, so we've now been single pin picking using some of the techniques that Dr. Bint talks about. We're looking for that speed bump. Now we're really good at this. We know how to pick four pins. It becomes too easy. Well, now we need to pick up a new skill. And that new skill will be something like this. This is a Wilson Bohannon five pin lock. Now, Master Lock makes a five pinner as well. It doesn't really matter who makes it, as long as it's five pins and none of them are security pins. Well, I pick Wilson Bohannon for a reason. They're relatively inexpensive, first of all. Secondly, it's five pins. And thirdly, these are manufactured with a lot more precision than these Master Locks. So we're going to learn, we're going to enhance our tension control skills when we pick this, and we're going to be p learning how to pick that additional pin. So it's going to take a little bit more skill. Believe me, it won't be long before you conquer this five pin uh, lock because it's all standard pins. And you're going to be picking these so fast you won't believe it. When that day comes, it's time to escalate and tr it's time to learn a new skill. That's when we're going to move to something like, well, similar to this. This is a Master 150. Uh, what you really want is a Master 140. It looks identical to this. It's just slightly smaller, but it looks identical. And inside of a Master 140, it's down to four pins again. Except now, one or two of those pins will be security pins, usually uh, spools, and then the others will be standard pins. So we've lowered the number of pins, but we've increased the level of complexity because now you're going to have to learn how to overcome security pins. In this case, it's going to be two spools. Uh, you'll see a, there's a hundred YouTube videos about how to beat Master 140s. Watch some of them and you're going to get a lot of valuable tips about how, to, about how to beat security pins. Okay, once you've beat that Master 140, might be time to move to maybe this one. This is a Master 150. It has five pins. And now we have maybe three, uh, three security pins. And again, they're all going to be spools. So we increase the level of complexity and you're learning new skills. Okay, eventually you're going to beat that one. Now it might be time to escalate to something like this one. This is a Master 911, and it also is only five pins. But the guts on this one are just a little bit more complex. We have two things that we're dealing with here. First, we have a, a dead hasp. We have to, you have to pull it out. It's not spring-loaded. We have to deal with that. And four of the pins in here are going to be spools, and only one is going to be standard. So again, you're going to get a lot of practice on beating these high security pins. By the time you get to uh, beating this one pretty regularly, your skills are going to be quite well developed. By the way, this shouldn't take but a, maybe two or three months, quite honestly, if you, perf if you go at it logically. Okay, now we've learned how to pick that. Now you might want to jump to a lock like this one. 
because up until this point we have been using our favorite tension tool, bottom of the keyway. Well now when we jump to this master lock, this is a model 570. I think you can even read it here. Now the thing about the 570 is that um, first of all it's a dead core. It's not spring-loaded. All of these are spring-loaded. This one when you put it in there, if I can get this key in, it's completely dead. There's no spring in there. So this is the point at which you're going to become very, very good at managing your tension. Because a dead core will teach you tension control, if nothing else. It's very easy to over torque, and you will develop a very light tension touch on this. And with a light tension touch, again, you're going to have to be beating, these are four security pins, high security pins, and one standard pin. So it's a, basically the same core, except now tension control becomes absolutely critical. Well, by this point, you have beat spool pins and standard pins, and probably mushroom pins as well, because you know, a lot of people like to differentiate between spool pins and mushroom pins, and I've been picking locks almost a week now, and I have to tell you, I can pick both of those very, very well, and I can't tell the difference, but guys swear that they can. But they beat them, you handle them both in exactly the same way. The only pin that you have not yet learned is this aerated pin. And this is a, a master lock. Almost all, I'm sorry, a, an American lock. Almost all American locks come with serrated pins. And usually they're all serrated pins. So now we're dealing with a five pin lock, all serrated. So on this one, we can't use bottom of the keyway. You're going to learn a new skill now, because if you try to use bottom of the keyway in an American lock, it will actually bind up the cylinder. So that's a, it's a technique that they use to defeat us. Now you're going to have to learn a new skill to go along with your tensioning, and that'll be top of the keyway. You can make it. Uh, I made this one. There's nothing scientific about it. There's no reason to pay for these things or uh, spend a lot of money. You can make them out of windshield wipers with a uh, pair of pliers. And it, you simply fit it into the top of the keyway. And now it's basically the same type of tension control except it's from the top. It just takes a little bit more concentration. But what you'll find is that your feedback uh, in the tip of your finger is even a little bit more sensitive than bottom of the keyway. The other advantage is that it doesn't bind up the core and now you've opened up the bottom so that now you have plenty of room to work. In fact when you learn top of the keyway you might consider learning it on this Master 570 and let me show you why. Master 570 has a very very small keyway and if we try to put bottom of the keyway tension inside of there it's possible oops let me get them in there it'll work and it's possible, if you have a very, very thin pick, it's possible to get it in there. But you're probably going to find yourself oversetting some of those pins. So when you move to the 570, that might be a good time to try to move. go ahead and at the same time move to top of the tension, or top of the keyway tension. You can make your own, or if you want to spend money, there's a couple of manufacturers. This one happens to be Peterson, I think. It goes right in the top of the keyway. It's serrated. It doesn't slip. It's kind of a cool tool. The thing I don't like is, is the angle of my finger. I, it's just for me, it's just a little bit awkward. But again, it opens up the bottom of that keyway so you can now fit your pick inside of there to pick that lock. Okay, so now we've progressed, you've learned, you've gone through American. Again, there's a lot of uh, YouTubes about how to beat serrated pins. I'm not going to waste your time here. It's definitely a skill and it's going to take some finesse and that's... that's uh, a skill that's going to be added to your repertoire. Okay, as you go through these locks, you're going to be learning a lot of different techniques. You're going to be learning, as you go through, you're going to be learning zipping, you're, you're going to be learning how to rock them, you're going to be learning how to bitch pick, you're going to be learning how to speed pick, all kinds of techniques that you're going to be picking up when you go, when you, as you progress through these locks. And again, it doesn't take that long. Easily six months, you could easily be, if you start from zero, you'll be picking these easily within six months. Well, where do you get the locks? Because we're looking at about, I don't know, 60 bucks here. Well, 
there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different sources. One of the things you can do is get what's called a challenge lock, and I'll put the link to this. This is called the ultimate challenge lock. It it, it has removable pins in the top. You can remove those Allen screws, and you can pin it up however you want to. They send you this little fill bottle, and it's got all kinds of security pins in it. If you only want to learn how to pick serrated, you can just put a serrate one serrated pin, and you'll get a feel for that, or one one spool pin. So it's an excellent tool for that. Uh, other locks. If you want to get free locks, go see your local locksmith. Explain what you're doing and he will give you these. And I go to my local locksmith about once a month and I buy them a pizza for lunch. And then they've learned to save locks in a bucket and they give these to me every time I go see them. Uh, if you if you want to go to the dollar store, they usually have really cheap Chinese locks. That might be a place. Craigslist. I have a guy who sells me Medico locks for $10 each, and I met him through Craigslist, and the locks are practically brand new. If you go to a company called Restore, it's run by Habitat for Humanity. It's a place where people that are restoring their houses take all of their old materials to include their locks. This is a bucket I just brought back. I didn't even count them, but this was $12. They practically give these away. Not all of them have keys, but what do you care? It's not really that important, is it? Uh, all you care about is getting, getting the lock itself. All right, so I hope I've gone through this. I hope I've given you a couple of tips on how to logically progress and build your skills as you go through these different locks. I've given you an option to, instead of buying locks, you can just buy this one for about, I want to say, about $35 or $40. So I think that pretty well wraps it up, except for the secret of lockpicking. The secret of lockpicking, fellas, I think you know what's on the back of this card. I don't think I really need to turn it over. Because I can't explain everything to you in a simple YouTube video. You have to put your hands on. And so this secret to lockpicking is putting your hands on it, getting the experience, and developing the touch and feel necessary to pick this whole family of locks. And if you'll invest a little bit of time uh, into developing those skills, you will find yourself uh, a very uh, competent lock picker in a very short time. Anyway, we're at 17 minutes. I'm sorry, fellas, it took so long. Thank you for your time. Uh, everybody stay safe and stay legal.